All right, welcome back. It's back to the basics. I'm Sean Barr, and today we are talking about 802.1x. Everything from authenticating a device coming into a conference room. Do I give them corporate or guest? Or maybe nothing at all. Let's go! All right, we're back, and we are talking 802.1x. So what is 802.1x? Well, it is an authentication mechanism that we leverage, uh, and we're gonna talk about specifically on LAN. Uh, you can use 802.1x on the wireless, uh, wireless networks as well, but we're gonna be specifically talking about wired ports or the local area network. Um, and it uses uh, extensible authentication protocol, which is EAP, um, to authenticate a device. So for example, in common areas like conference rooms, maybe there's people coming into these areas where you don't really know who they are. Maybe a contractor, maybe a guest. Um, it could be maybe a public area that you could access just by walking in the front door of your office. You don't wanna give uh, them network access. So essentially if there's a, a wired port there, they can plug in their laptop and get access to your network depending on how you have it configured. What 802.1x does is authenticates that device to say, should I give them access to the network at all? Maybe I give them guest access or maybe I give them corporate access. But 802.1x is that facility that looks and says, hey, what is this device? Is it, should it be on my network? Does it get corporate access? So as soon as you plug into a wired port, EAP goes out and tries to authenticate that device, whether through a certificate or a MAC address, and says, do I recognize this device? So for example, if I plug in my laptop and I've got domain membership and I'm configured for 802.1x, .1x, um, it will give me corporate access on that wired port. If I unplug and I plug in a device that maybe isn't onboarded into the corporate environment, maybe I have my authentication service configured so it gives me guest access. Maybe I get access to the internet, but no corporate infrastructure. Um, and lastly, if I wanted to, I could just say, hey, if you're not a part of our domain and you plug into one of these ports, you get no access. So 802.1x provides some authentication mechanism for physical access to your network. It just really helps around security. So ideally in those conference rooms or public use spaces, you can secure those ports leveraging. All right, so there's a couple of components with 802.1x. There's obviously the switch, which does the authentication. It initiates that EAP, um, extended authentication protocol, it initiates that. And then there's the backend authentication server, which is traditionally RADIUS. So you need to configure both the switch, the RADIUS server, and then the host that's, that's authenticating, that needs to be enabled for 802.1x. If it's not, you can configure the switch to do something called MAC authentication bypass, where it looks at the MAC address of the device and says, do I match a list? And if I do, I get corporate access or whatever kind of security policy you wanna set. And additionally, if you fail authentication, you have the option to give access to maybe a guest network so they get internet access only, or you could just say you get no access to our network at all. We don't even provide you internet access. So that's it. 802.1x, perfect for public use ports and public use spaces, and it provides that layer of security so somebody can't just walk into your environment and get access to the corporate network. If I said anything in this video that you're like, hey, I'd love to know more about Radius, 802.1x, certificate-based authentication, whatever it is, make sure you leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next Back to the Basics. Thanks for watching.